What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. I hope everybody's doing good, staying safe. Today, we are joined by one of the most promising uh, players on the Minnesota Vikings, uh, cornerback, I believe, as well. Cam, no, not cornerback, strong safety. Let me, let me correct myself. Yep. Let's put some respect on the position there. <laughs> Cam Bynum, how are you doing, man? How are you feeling today? I'm doing great. Uh, I'm in the off-season grind, feeling good, a little tired, but back here and yeah thank you for having me on of course we appreciate you joining me like i said even though it's the off season it's your time to relax i know there's still a lot going on like you said so i appreciate you cutting out some time for us now i'm gonna go ahead and get things started here you know you were born and raised on the west side of things golden state of california um mm -hmm. you were drafted by minnesota in 2021 what kind of has your experience been like growing up what has the experience been like transitioning from being on the coast to being in minnesota um and kind of you know that professional career you've been developing from the west to the midwest now right it's it's a lot different uh when i first got here it was really confusing because you see all the green trees everywhere it's a bunch of greenery everywhere so just looking around you see a lot more nature which is really cool for me because i grew up and in southern california it's ba basically a desert so you don't get a lot of that <laughs> so uh, really the scenery was different than also I'm a beach. I love going to the beach. I love being in the water and chilling in the hot weather. And obviously you, you hear about Minnesota, you know, instantly think about you think about the snow. That's the first thing that pops in your head when anybody mentions Minnesota. So um, it was a big transition for me my first year, figuring out how to live in the snow, how to drive in the snow. That's a whole nother issue. But uh, right now going into my third year, used to it now. It feels like home out here for me. So um, I, I'm a homebody anyway, so I really can't go wrong wh wherever I'm at. So I'm enjoying it. Um, but, you know, always missing California, missing the sun and the beaches out there. I love that. And it's kind of cool because you kind of get the best of both. I mean, you really do get the best of both sides. When it gets too crazy in the winter, you can always possibly go back home and get some of that, you know what I'm saying, sun, sunny, like sun weather. But then at the same time, we got locked down there. So I, to I totally get that. I'm from Texas originally. I mean, oh, yeah. you know exactly what I'm learning how to drive in the snow, it's a different kind of beast. Yeah, you know exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, it's it's different, but <laughs> it, you start to enjoy it after a while and you get used to it and realize, OK, it's it's all it's cool. But once once the winter goes a little too long, all right, I'm like, all right, I'm out, especially <laughs> in the off season. I'm like, especially this year, it was uh, I think it snowed until like middle of April when I came back um, to OTAs this this time around. I didn't check the weather and I'm coming from the Philippines. Where it's hot. It's hot out there. I didn't check the weather. I came here and it was snow on the ground. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> so it was confusing. Oh, man, that's so wild. Now, you said talking about the off season, but, you know, I know NFL, it'll be here. August won't be here before you know it, really. Um, I would kind of love to know, and I'm pretty sure people have asked you this before, but I, I have to know, what was your, like, welcome to the NFL moment? And then on top of that, I would love to know in the in a league where it's constantly show and prove, how do you work on like consistent growth for yourself and like trying to make sure that you're getting better every year to, you know, solidify your position and your place on the team, but also mm -hmm. your self-awareness of like where I want to grow, where I want to get better and things like that. How do you balance that out after your NFL moment? Um, I have a few welcome to NFL moments I could think of. First of all, the call I got when I got drafted and GM told me, hey, Cam, we're going to move you to safety. Uh, we're drafting you as a safety. And for me, I've played corner my whole life. So you went wrong when you introduced oh, yeah, me yeah. as a corner because I played that my entire life until I got to the NFL. So that was really my moment of like being surprised. Like, okay, I, I can do it. I'm willing to do whatever because you guys are drafting me. But it was a uh, it was kind of stressful once I got there because I didn't realize how different it was. I'm um, always prided myself in learning every position on the defense and knowing stuff. But it wasn't till like you really get those reps and you you realize okay playing corner is a lot different than playing safety. It's they're similar positions, both DBs, but you have to play the game at completely different ways. So that my next moment was the preseason. Um, you know, you're you're a draftee. They make you play the entire preseason. So for me, I had to play every special team snap, every defensive snap for the whole preseason. And it, it felt it was bad because I was tired. It was hot. But, you know, everybody in the preseason game 
if you're in the game, you got to go as hard as possible because you're trying to earn a spot on the team. So mm -hmm. that was my big moment to really like show myself. But it was that was a tough moment just because I was every single week. I was dead tired, taking every rep in practice, going to game, take every rep in special teams and on defense, just trying to figure it out. But I needed those reps because, like I said, it was a new position. So there's nothing that can get you better. No, no amount of film, no amount of. Um, drawing on the whiteboard can get you ready for a whole new position. So I needed the reps and got it. And my third one, my third moment was my first start my rookie year when the starter, starting safety Harrison Smith, he got um, COVID right before the game. And oh. coach told me, oh, Cam, you're starting. And I, I prepared. I was ready all year. And this was, I think, game 11 or game 12 of the year and it was against the Baltimore Ravens and ended up getting my first interception that game had 12 tackles uh went crazy against uh I, I picked off Lamar Jackson one of the best quarterbacks in the league yeah, I was about to say uh, that was that was my welcome pot that was my positive welcome to the NFL moment just because that was one of the times where I was like okay all this these 10 12 weeks of preparation of not getting in on defense but treating every single week as if I'm a starter and I was just thankful that I prepared because I could have I could have easily gone in that moment and laid an egg and, and had no clue what to do if I wasn't preparing that time. So that was my that shifted my mentality, even through the rest of my career, even on to the next question that you said, how do you stay ready is and with knowing that it's always a competitive league is really you have to stay ready, just like that moment where I knew that. OK, one time I'll get my shot and I have to take advantage of it. I got my shot at that time. And that was my moment to realize, OK, I'm capable, but there's so much more to do. I'm still not the starter. So um, just continue to grind that the rest of that season. Off season came, just worked hard and was ended up starting um, this past season and playing every snap on defense this past season, not missing one play. And you just realize, okay, the hard work paid off, but there's still so much more to do, so many more plays to make. So every every day, every every workout, anything I'm doing, my mindset is, okay, how how much better can I get today? And knowing that, okay, it's I have a lot of teammates that are going to compete with me mm -hmm. and compete against me, but we're all here to get each other better. And I, that's one thing I love about having teammates like that is everybody's competing, but we're all – trying to get each other better. So just knowing, being aware that, okay, people are here, everybody's here to take each other's spot. It's healthy competition, but um, you have to realize you need other people to help get you better. So just leaning on the guys around you and just being a good teammate and just grinding as hard as you can is really how you stay on top of your game and just continue to progress and just practice okay. the right way. All the little small things through the process. Continuous progression at every single point. I love that. That's, that's definitely a fact there. Now, you know, I'm talking about your NFL career. We're going to talk about some more of the work that you do off the field. But, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, you know, I have to say congrats. You know, you're a husband now as of March. Yes, you're a husband. You know, congratulations on your new marriage, man. Like, I, I just would love to kind of know, you know, you're already stepping into one thing, which is, you know, your NFL career, being an NFL athlete, which in a way is also still new. But at the same time, now you're a husband, so now you're stepping into a whole, you know, different journey of your life, a different chapter mm -hmm. of your life. What does it feel like to, to be stepping into that chapter, to be stepping into that role? Um, I think it's exciting. Uh, first of all, spiritually, for me to be a spiritual leader in the home uh, with my wife and just serving each other, serving God with our relationship so that we can um, encourage other people to uh, really just continue to love each other and love, love just spread love overall. Mm -hmm. um, but really, it's exciting for me, the just the concept of marriage, that it's a lifetime covenant. It's not, some people just see it as, okay, we just get into something and if we don't like it, divorce. No, I, my beliefs are, it's it's for life. And for me and our, our mentality and our beliefs is, it's a covenant between us and God. So just being able to have that mindset that we can, we have to serve each other and we get to serve each other the rest of our lives is so much beauty in that knowing that, okay, you're locked in forever. Let's see how good we can make our marriage, how much we can love each other, how much we can help other people through our marriage. So I just think there's so many sky's the limit in a marriage because you're that's your teammate. That's your forever teammate on mm -hmm. off the field, whatever, everything you do in life is 
you're representing each other, everything you do is for each other. So I, I think it's a beautiful challenge that I'm getting to step into and I'm really looking forward to it. And obviously it's easy now. I'm in the first few months of it, but um, I really, my, our mindset is it's really how much can we serve each other? How, how selfless can we be in our marriage? So I think that's the best way to look at it. I love, I, I absolutely love that. As somebody who is, who is going on two years of being married, you know, that I think you summed it up perfectly. Beautiful challenge, and that sounds like yeah. it's difficult. But I mean, when you're with somebody for the rest of your life, you're learning each other. You're gonna have your differences, and you're gonna have your areas of growth. But it is a beautiful challenge. Those are the things that make us better. That will make y'all better. So I, I, I love that you have y'all have that mindset going into it already, and you covered like yeah, applause, yeah that, applause, gotta applause. keep that mindset and just continue to to live it out. Because it's one thing to say it, but even even when things get tough, that's like I said, it's easy for me to say I'm a few months in, but like you, you're a few, you said two years in, I'm mm -hmm. sure things have been tough, but it's always like, okay, all this stuff has built us to love each other more and love other people more. So it's always been, it's always been a positive. I'm exactly. sure. Yeah. You got a solid found. That's the foundation you need. That's the foundation we have. So that's definitely a good that's foundation better. to build on. Now, talk about that piece of the journey, but we got to also mention the things that you do off the field um, and continuously for other, for other people and for, you know, just, the community in general. Um, before I get into that, of course, as us as, as being community voices, we'll be donating AK to the Bynum Faith Foundation. The foundation was established, so those who aren't as familiar, was established to uh, help provide relief from the uh, relief to the Philippines after the devastating earthquake and the tsunami hit 2022. I mean, something that's so much needed. You know, even though we are in America, we cannot neglect the things that are going on around us and how it can impact and have an effect on the things around us, especially with this being um, AAPI month too. I want to make sure we definitely shed light on that. So also I was just kind of, I want to make sure that, you know, I, I would love to know, you know, what has your experience been like uh, being able to give back to, to, you know, your people in the community and and, and have an impact, um, you know, on home at home, you know, at the same time, you know, the things that your organization allows you to do, like having trips there and things like that, what has it been like uh, being able to have that impact and doing those kind of things? Yeah, first of all, thank you guys so much for that donation. That's going to change thousands of lives, especially with the dollar being transfer transformed to uh, pesos over there in the Philippines. It's it, The dollar goes a long way and can help so many people. So that donation alone is going to change lives. So I appreciate that. But um, really... Uh, for me, I start by just saying it changed my life um, as, as much as we, our goal is to change other people's lives. Me being able to go back to the Philippines and seeing what goes on over there. And we don't hear about it a lot. All the typhoons, the earthquakes, um, really everything that comes with being in an island over there. It all happens. And there's so much um, just devastating things that happen over there. And we don't hear about it over here. So me being able to go see it firsthand but see everybody's attitude and how grateful they are mm. and just the, just the community, how, how really they have nothing and they're still super happy, still joyful, grateful for any little thing that changed my life. And literally as, as soon as I came back, I was like, I have no right to ever complain about anything that I have here. So just being able to go out there and um, bring uh, relief to the families, especially when we went the first time, it was for the typhoon victims who lost homes from landslides and the complete neighborhoods just completely wiped out and gone. And we're giving them food packs because they, they're living in evacuation centers and seeing how happy they are for a, a can of spam or some rice, just little small things like that. Um, cash with 500 pesos, which was is $10 here. And they're like acting like they won the lottery. And I'm, it just changed my, changed my life seeing how much, how little you, you can give to somebody and how grateful they are. And out here, we, we were so spoiled and not in a bad way. It's a blessing that it's like that. And we live in a country that has a lot of our needs, but seeing that, seeing other people um, receive things that we think is normal and that those little things change their lives. It's, it's eye opening for me. And it's just so cool seeing the joy, especially on the kids out there, just how much, um, they can still be joyful after losing their parents, after losing siblings, neighbors, family members, their homes in a landslide. You can't even tell there's a neighborhood there at one point. 
because the whole mountain side is gone because of the rain for weeks straight. So it's kind of, it's just, it, it changed my life seeing it and just being able to be a part of helping people's lives and building relationships has really been just huge for me. I love that. And it's, it's so, like I said, it's so important. And I know you, meant, you touched on it earlier when you say, you know, it kind of seems like how spoiled we are. Not that it's a bad thing, but, you know, everything you spoke to speaks to perspective. You know, everything that we have around us, a lot of to us, you know, it makes, it, it hinders how we perceive things, how we see things, you know, like when we, right. do, we think we don't have something in reality, there are places or people who more like, like who really don't have much, you know, more, more rich in their spirit and finding happiness in the little things they do have than what they don't have. And so just, I know as, as traumatic as that is for all parties involved and for everybody, it does like bringing able to bring back that spirit that like now you can look at your life and the things that you have and the people that you meet and the interactions that you have in a whole new perspective to where if you didn't you you wouldn't have that that tool to to really like you know do the work like that so i i love thank you for sharing that insight and, and experience from this trip because that's something that's super important and it needs to be heard right uh, I, I want to continue on. I, know I want to. I don't want to take up too much of your time on on a busy day. So I'm gonna ask you a couple more questions. But I would love to know too. Um, with everything going on, I know that you know there's a sports world in the Philippines as well, but it may not be as predominant as like America. I kind of like we're, we're driven and run on sports as well. Mm -hmm. um, I know that from what I understand, you're also going to be building some some resources and camps there, some things to get people. You know. Yeah. Doing, getting into certain sports and, and certain activities and things like that, which I think is beautiful. The more escapes and outlets and maybe right. even resources that we can give, um, I think the better 100%. Um, I would just kind of love to know what has that experience been like getting those kind of things set up um, and, you know, like all the intangibles that kind of come with that, like teamwork and trust to create those kind of things. Right. So when I got there in the off season, because I live here, I lived in the Philippines this past off season um, for the whole time, got married out there and everything was with my wife over there. So mm -hmm. as I was training and just meeting new people, I met a group of football players out there that are really into football and they're like, you know everything. They know more about the NFL than I do. And <laughs> just picking their brain and talking to them and training with them every single day. I realized how football isn't big out there at all. One, because it's so hot out there and it's not, one of the wealthiest countries out there. So football is kind of, it's a tough sport because you're wearing all the gear. It's expensive because you need a helmet, shoulder pads. You need a lot of space, a good field. So just small things like that. You need a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. But they told me, then they showed me how big the, um, and how much potential the flag football community has out there. So um, after just learning that and seeing that, okay, the football is not big out here, but Filipinos love sports. It's all basketball, all boxing. Um, they call it billiards, but pool, um, <laughs> tennis, volleyball, all those other sports. But I'm like, okay, well, what about football? They're like, soccer? I'm like, no, American football. Like, that's not, nobody really knows what that is out there. So it's been my goal and is my goal eventually to make football a popular and consistent sport out there. So step one of that is we're getting, putting on a, like a camp out there in the Philippines this summer, um, June 24th and 25th, where we're bringing some of my trainers from here, my um, Coach Brown, Coach Bankhead. Um, that's their names. I've, they've trained me since I was a kid, and they put on camps now and run seven-on-seven seven teams. So we're going to go out there and bring all of our coaching and team up with um, the flag football communities out there. And even just the they have even padded football out there also, not a big community of it. But we're teaming up with them to put on a, a camp to really bring the game out there on a larger scale and bring – all these coaches in and all these players that are really into it to teach all the just normal people out there about the game, bring footballs, bring flags, all these resources so they can be able to play the game. So um, th this is step one of us and me trying to really bring and normalize football in Asia and specifically in the Philippines. I love it. That is step one is a step in the right direction is what I'm hearing. So I, I yes, love you. And that's God's work right there for sure. That's awesome. Um, I want to ask you one last thing before I let you go. Um, you know, there's not much Asian representation within the NFL. Mm -hmm. um, I think 
from the report, I remember I think there's about like maybe 1.6 percent players in the NFL, um, right. which is like just 27 players, but you know, with you being one. I would love to know. How can I ask this? What is it? Not I don't want to say what does it mean to be one of the 27 because I know it means a lot. I, I feel like it's a typical yeah. answer. Not means a lot, but how does it make you feel to be one of those 27 to know that like you're putting in steps and you're working in areas to bring in more people so that that 27 can expand to, to, to get larger and get more opportunity. Cause the opportunity can de is definitely more difficult, especially if you're trying to, you know, come from the Philippines or going to different areas because all the things and resources that it, that it takes to, to make it into this league, uh, right. a top of skill. What is that like? And at the same time, can you speak to the pride of, you know, being on the field, knowing that's who you're representing, knowing that, like, you know, you're going to be somebody who's breaking boundaries when your team goes to the playoffs, when you get championships, when you get Super Bowl, when, mm -hmm. you know, that that is going to be something that you're also representing and standing up for and breaking records and making history for. What does it feel like, you know, representing in the NFL, but then also wanting to expand that presence in the NFL as well? Uh, first of all, it's a blessing just being able to represent um, people and a group of people, no matter who it is, whether I'm representing for God, representing for um, America, representing for the Philippines, for any community, just being able to be somebody in a spotlight and doing something positive with it. Yeah, I feel like that's inspiring to people. And I'm grateful to be in a position because I feel like it's my responsibility to do something positive with what I've been given, but being able to, okay, so growing up and especially now I've been researching and just going back and watching everything Manny Pacquiao did, one mm -hmm. of the best boxers of all time and seeing how, how much he meant to the country of the Philippines and just the worldwide. Um, he's one of my biggest inspirations and in seeing what he did in the ring, but also even more so out of the ring. Like, it's funny, like just talking to everybody in the Philippines and just seeing their experiences, like when Manny was fighting, the whole whole country would be put on pause. Everybody stops, businesses close the day of, the day after to watch his fights. And it's like the whole world stopped, crime, crime rates go down to zero during the fights, like some crazy stats like that. And it's just like, okay, he's literally doing a sport he loves, but he's bringing so much positive stuff out of it and just being an inspiration to people. And you realize how many people start boxing because of him and me trying to bring football to another country and another side of the world and even on behalf of all of us in the nfl the 1.7 percent that you brought up or 1.6 percent whatever it is um sink uh, people being able to see okay they can do it too so why don't i try and play football it's just an inspiration i feel like that we don't realize how big of an impact that we have on people just being able to like i said be in that spotlight and doing something positive and speaking specifically in, on, in Filipino culture, the support runs so heavily and so deep to mm. where pe people are super supportive of me, even though they don't know really know what football is. And it's just eye opening for me to realize, OK, they're just inspired seeing somebody that's Filipino and um, just seeing me being able to do something positive and doing any sport on a professional level. It give they just talk about how much it gives them hope to if if they're playing basketball to try even harder trying to make it with that or even if they they're playing football just seeing okay wow Cam made it so I think I can make it too mm -hmm. um, just that little inspiration that change even if it changes one person's life to to just work harder try try harder and just go out of their comfort zone to try and play a sport and really for anything inspire you with anything because i know manny pacquiao he he impacted my life and just seeing okay he, he did all this had all the success in the ring made all this money but he's he's given it all back to his communities and paying it forward because like he came from dirt poor nothing and got everything he wanted through boxing became a senator in the philippines ran for president all this stuff just to better the people. And I see how inspiring that was to me. I'm like, okay, how much can I do also? How much can we all inspire people just from whatever background you come from, regardless of your race, regardless of where you're from, I feel like everybody has a chance to inspire somebody. And for me being 
Filipino, I know it's not common that you see a Filipino in a professional sport. So I feel like that's an even bigger deal for most people watching and it just gives so much hope. So long story short, I think, yeah, you could be a great inspiration to people and change somebody's life to take a risk at something. Mm. I'm not even going to speak more on that. I'm going to let that read. Let that say Long where it. But, I love it. But yeah. needed to be said. Needed to be said. I'm mean, yeah. you expressed it because, like I said, that's you're giving people hope and people don't understand. It's, it's places people don't understand taking hope for granted, taking faith for granted. Right. You're giving yeah. people things that we sometimes take for granted that people really need. So, exactly. I, I exactly. love that. I love that. Well, listen, man, thank you so much for joining us and cutting out some time during your busy off season too. And of course, always best of luck over here in your upcoming season, man. Thank you very much for joining us, bro. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for the donation. Like I said, it's going to change lives and I'm looking forward to it. And yes, appreciate you a bunch. A hundred percent. Appreciate you. And thank you everybody for tuning in to another episode of Community Voices. We'll see you next time.